evening. It's a frightening reality, but campaigners say children as young as three should be warned about the dangers of the internet. Some may feel that's too young, but experts say it's essential that even preschool children understand the risks. Malcolm Shaw has our report. Yay, the wonder tablet! <sighs> it's the story of a little girl called Phoebe and her experiences online. Today, the puppet play was being performed to children at the Brighton & Hove Prep School, some as young as three. Knock upon the big red door is what the website says. She uh, reads on her parents' iPad about a creature called a penguin pig and she decides to uh, follow the instructions on the internet to find the penguin pig at the zoo. But what is inside is maybe not what it seems. Phoebe's encounter with a virtual friend leads her into real danger, venturing out on her own, crossing busy roads and encountering fierce animals at the zoo. The message of the play not lost on the young audience. Not to follow the internet because some of it isn't true. Not to look on there without an adult as well. Someone can f um, follow you or something and you don't want that. <laughs> The puppet show has been commissioned as part of this year's Brighton Digital Festival. It's about getting the children to understand that things on the internet may not be real and they do have to be careful about what they are looking at, what they are searching for and some of the results they may get back. And that's a lesson which is taken very seriously here. These year six students regularly use iPads and know the pitfalls. You have to be careful who you give your details to. With my email, my it always goes via my dad. If anyone has ever tried to befriend you, always check with your parents first. We've got a great tool at the NSPCC that will help parents. It's called NetAware and it literally breaks down all of the places where children are enjoying and achieving online that tells you everything you need to know. So how do I set privacy settings? What's the risk of stranger contact? Oh, Phoebe. Not everything on the internet's real. Whether we like it or not, this generation has been born into an online world. Many experts believe that teaching them how to handle that can't come too soon in their young lives. Malcolm Shaw, ITV News, Hove. Demands for urgent improvements to the A34 have been backed today by one of the South's biggest employers. Thousands of lorries use the road every day, travelling from the docks in Southampton to the Midlands and the North. But frequent accidents are causing costly delays as well as people's lives. Here's Richard Jones. In less than a year's time, a new five-storey building to help the speedy export of cars will open on this site at Southampton Docks. It's part of a £50 million investment at the port, which already sends more than half a million cars to customers around the world. There will also be more jobs. We see over 10,000 people locally working at the port, from the container industry to the cruise industry to the automotive handling and the, the other industries we support locally. And yet we see that continuing to grow as the port continues to thrive. But that success depends on the newly made cars being able to get to Southampton from where they're made and too often the region's busy roads hamper that. A third of the cars exported through here come by train, but road remains a vital link. The ones here in Southampton are already better than they used to be, but the port says that urgent improvements are needed on the links between the Midlands and the South Coast. Key piece for us, frankly, the A34 is a, is a key arterial route for us, and there are various points on that road which are certainly challenging and we're working with you know, the various agencies and LEPs and so on to see what we can do now and plan to do in the future to make sure that as the industry grows, if it is going to grow, we can help it do that. Southampton already plays a key role in the British car industry. The port wants to ensure that clogged roads don't stand in the way of further success. Richard Jones, ITV News. Sussex police say a planned rail strike on bonfire night could cause severe travel problems in and around Lewis. Tens of thousands of people visit the town every year on November the 5th. But guards on Southern are due to walk out in a series of further strikes. Police say those travelling to Lewis need to plan their travel home and be prepared for delays. 
Villagers in Sussex are angry at plans to put up a phone mast in a recreation ground which serves as a memorial to the fallen of the Great War. The field near Uckfield was originally bought to honour men from the village who served in the war. Derek Johnson sends this report. These are just some of the villagers who use the Framfield Recreation Ground. They include dog walkers and mums here for the children's playground. They're shocked at plans to put up a communications mast. I just think that to put a mast here, it's going to drive people away. It's so beautiful, it shouldn't be here. It's the wrong place. Villagers are wearing poppies to emphasise the link to the Great War. The field was bought on behalf of the survivors who made it home and wanted a place to remember and honour their comrades who weren't so lucky. In 1923, they started to plant the trees in commemoration of the fallen. There aren't so many now, but there were 60 trees right around the, the uh, green here, and each one would have a plaque at its foot. The, the impact of having this, these trees with the plaques on made it completely different from any other recreation ground. It's almost like a holy ground for us. Sergeant William Harland is one of the fallen. He died of disease serving in Greece. This is his plaque, and this is the tree planted to remember him. The other original plaques have been retrieved over the years and are now kept together. I personally believe it's desecration of the site. You destroy the reason that we all live in a village. We all live here because it's a real rural community. Um, and if you put a mast in here, it, it's no longer a rural community. There are supporters who say the village needs the money being offered by developers. The company behind the application declined to comment. Wilden Council will make a decision next month. Derek Johnson, ITV News, Framfield. A community theatre in Brighton has launched an urgent plea for funding to save it from closure. Actors are currently rehearsing a performance of Sweeney Todd at the venue, 88 London Road. £5,000 is needed to keep it open. And finally tonight, back to a time when the football hard men roam the pitches across the country. A new book's been published about the Southampton tough guys and it's not for the faint-hearted, as Andrew Pate now reports. It was rough and uncompromising. The Saints, who were also sinners. Two of the stars of a new book have come together to remember when football really was a contact sport. Jimmy Case telling me how he used to keep an eye on the opposition hard men. One of the so-called um, enforcers, if you want to call them in them days, they, you know, they get about the pitch. And, and what it is, you, they unsettle our more gifted players like Matt Letizia. They, they try to you know, get stuck into them, so they put them off the game. But that, that's my job in a sense, to get in between or go over there and say, well, you know, you can't be doing that all the game, you know, so it, 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 that's a nice, polite way of putting it. Francis Benali only scored one goal during his 389 Southampton appearances, but he was sent off 11 times. I think it's a shame that it's been taken out of the game to a degree, um, especially when we see an awful lot of the modern players now, you know, the slightest contact, slightest touch, and they're going to ground or they're rolling around when they're not not injured at all really so that's a little bit of frustration and disappointment in some ways as a fan now but uh, I wish there were a little bit more of the, 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 the tackling that were allowed in our day still in the game today. The book looks at all the Southampton hard men but says Jimmy Case was the hardest of them all. There's a great quote in the book from uh, Neil Ruddock where he saw Jimmy clatter somebody and said what have you done that for? He's done nothing wrong. And Jimmy said, well, not today, but five years ago he did. <laughs> and then another quote from Neil Ruddock, he said that uh, in my day, you didn't want the, your opponent to be sent off, you wanted him to stay on so you could kick him again. Now, what does the weekend weather have in store? With all of the details tonight, here is Simon Parkin. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather.
Good evening, and don't say this too loudly, but it's actually going to be a pretty decent weekend for tonight. It's a quiet one, and it's quite a chilly one as well. Temperatures down into single figures underneath the clear skies, and we will see perhaps a bit of patchy mist developing as well. But that'll burn away fairly quickly first thing tomorrow morning, and we are in for quite a nice day. Some good spells of sunshine turning a bit hazy as the day goes on, but look at those temperatures, 21, 22, maybe even 23 or 24, all thanks to an increasing wind bringing with it warm air from the near continent but then some rain overnight so a damp start to Sunday but brighter later. Eurotunnel the shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. So not looking too bad for the weekend ahead and that is all from us. We are back tomorrow afternoon just after six and any updates will be on our website itv.com forward slash meridian but from me and from all of us here on the late team tonight good night.